Today we're looking at an Amstrad CPC 6128 with a very weird keyboard problem. Uh, basically what happens is when you press the delete key you get about four other characters come up at the same time. So uh, very much like this. And if we just press the delete key, as you can see, get those four characters up, it's very, very odd. Now the other weird thing is when you press and hold the delete key down, it actually does delete. So we've had a look at the schematic and here it is. And I've traced out where that delete key actually goes. Now, weirdly enough, it's actually kind of on its own column and row. And I guess that's why all the other keys seem okay. But it's actually connected to this chip here, the 74LS145, and then obviously the AY38912 and the 8255. Um, that one was going to be the easiest to replace. So that is the first one I'm going to uh, actually desolder. And what I'll probably do is actually just check it with my, uh, I've got an EEPROM programmer which can uh, check logic chips. So we'll check it with that and see if it passes. But first of all, we've got to desolder it. And to do that, we're going to use our trusty ZD985 desoldering gun. So we're just going to check that this is the right one. We got the 145, it's this chip here. And we're going to try not to uh, break any tracks, that would also be good. And I find that dental picks are very good at levering these chips out uh, instead of the screwdriver I used last time for no discernible reason I can understand. That looks okay, so we'll just see if we can just see if we can get that out. Right, so let's see if we can now lever that out. It kind of looks like it looks like it's well desoldered. I think I can see a pin there that doesn't look quite right. I've checked the holes, they all seem to be okay, so it should come out all right. It can take a little bit of persuading sometimes. Might need to just um, have a look at that pin on the back end there. <clears throat> Let's spin this round so I can actually see it a little bit better. Hope it actually come out now. The end of the game is not damage the chip or the board, really. There we go, and they all look really good to me. So now we need to put it into the EPROM programmer and test it. I've put the 74LS145 chip into my trusty EPROM programmer and now we're going to test and see if it works. So first of all we select it up here. So it's a 74LS145. And we'll do a search for all, logic IC and select it. And now we're just going to hit the test button. And that's failed, uh, which is pretty much what I was expecting well, and hoping. 
So the next thing to do is replace that chip. And now to the chip replacement. So what I normally like to do when I replace any chip in a CPC is to actually fit a socket onto it. So that's what we're going to do now. So we can just put that in there. These are always a bit fiddly to get in. But that looks all right. Yeah, everything's nice and straight there. Now we can flip it. And now we can solder it. It's always good to put a socket in. I did eight RAM chips recently. All socketed. That was fun. I actually managed to do that without damaging any tracks as well, which is good. Because that is a lot of connections. 16 connections per chip. That is a lot for eight chips. Yeah, that looks pretty good to me. It's over to testing. But first, we have to put the chip in the board. Oh, it won't work. Oh, nice crunchy noise. We like that. That is our logic chip replaced. Now, on to testing. Let's power on the CPC. Type some characters and see if they'll delete. Oh, yeah. That looks pretty good to me. So if you get a CPC exhibiting those sort of symptoms, um, my advice would be to replace the 74LS145 chip. Quite an easy fix, quite a quick fix. And that's another one saved from landfill.